So this version of integration by parts might be the most challenging. So this is called, I call it a wraparound. And so we need to use this wraparound idea when both factors in your integrand are transcendental, meaning neither of them is a polynomial that, that becomes nice, right? It doesn't, I can't get it down to be a constant. So how, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to let u, it doesn't really matter, we're just going to be consistent. So I'm going to let u equal e to the x, and dv will be cosine x dx. And then I need du, still, right, e to the x dx, and v, get my little cheat sheet. Uh, so I'm going up, so that's sine x. So this becomes u times v minus the integral of v du, so I'm kind of keeping it the same. Okay. So this, so our new, our v du, it kind of looks the same as what we started with, except instead of a cosine, I've got a sine, but I still don't know what that is. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the integration by parts again. And whatever you chose for u on your first one, you want to choose the same thing on your next one. So we'll grab a new color. So we're going to do integration by parts again. So we're going to let u equal e to the x. So then dv equals sine x dx, du e to the x dx, v is negative cosine x. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this line down and I'm going to replace this last one with the parts. So I have e to the x cosine x equals e to the x sine x minus, do some brackets here, u times v, so negative because of that cosine e to the x cosine x, u times v, minus the integral of v, oh, and then see that minus and that minus will be plus, cosine x v du, e to the x dx. Stay with me. So now let's take care of this negative sign. I'm going to take the negative sign through. So integral e to the x cosine x dx, that's where we started. This is equal to e to the x sine x. So this negative sign here is going through the parentheses. Plus e to the x cosine x minus integral e to the x cosine x dx. You're thinking, hey, why aren't you doing by parts again on that last one? Well, as you can imagine, right, we're just going to get in this cycle. But here's what I want you to notice. So this integral here on the very far right side is exactly the same as the integral on the very far left side, right? So it's like like terms. So I'm going to add this um, negative integral e to the x cosine x dx to both sides. So they're going to add out on the right, and what do you suppose it's going to be on the left? Right, so I have two of them added together, right? So I have two integral e to the x cosine x dx, and that equals e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x. So maybe you're thinking, well, what does that gain me? Well, remember what we were originally asked to find was the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. Well, we almost have that down here, right? So I have two of them. I know that two times that equals all of this. So if I just want one of them, I can divide out that two. So e to the x sine x plus e to the x cosine x all over two.
So if you have an integration by parts and both of the factors are transcendental in that they'll not go away when you start doing your DUs, um, you're just going to have to be consistent. Do it twice, move the last term back, divide by the coefficient.